the world went from emitting this much carbon dioxide to this. Now about 33 billion tons of energy-related carbon dioxide are emitted every year. So what if we could capture carbon dioxide and remove it from the atmosphere? That's where direct air capture comes in. Air is sucked in with massive fans and pushed through a filter. They're chemicals in the form of a liquid solvent or solid sorbent selectively react with and remove CO2, while the other air components simply pass through. Once the CO2 molecules are captured, heat is typically applied in order to release them from the solvent or sorbent. Liquid solvent systems require high temperatures of up to 1,652 degrees Fahrenheit, and solid sorbents require from 176 to 248 degrees Fahrenheit to release the captured CO2. After the CO2 is isolated, the solvent and sorbent are then recycled for another round of capture. The CO2 is compressed and injected deep underground where it's used for other applications, stored, or in some conditions, turns to rock over time. There's an indefinite amount of storage space to be found underground, too. Research suggests that there is enough space underground in the U.S. alone to hold 1.8 trillion tons of CO2. One of the biggest benefits of direct air capture is that it can be situated anywhere. It requires less land than other carbon removal methods. To capture 1.1 million tons of CO2, a plant would need a plot of land spanning 0.15 to 9.5 square miles. But despite its siting flexibility, direct air capture is expensive. This is because even though the concentration of atmospheric CO2 is increasing, it's dilute and requires a lot of energy to separate out. It will take time for companies to develop their technologies and learn how to reduce costs. Carbon Engineering is one of the multiple companies that see the importance of direct air capture in achieving large-scale carbon removal. They say their process is scalable at a reasonable cost. Carbon Engineering hopes to eventually capture 1 million tons of carbon per year with each of its facilities and get its cost down to the point of economic viability, anywhere from $94 to $232 per ton of CO2. This is a steep drop from the costs of $600 seen elsewhere in the industry. If you're wondering just how big these facilities can get right now, we may already have the answer. Climeworks Orca facility in Iceland is the world's biggest carbon capture plant. At the heart of this facility are these fans, which can remove about 11 tons of CO2 every day. The facility as a whole single-handedly increased the world's carbon capture by 40%, bringing annual global carbon capture to 13,000 tons. That's about the same as emissions from 870 cars. This is just the start for the facility. Iceland can store about 50 times our annual carbon emissions in its extremely porous volcanic rock, with no risk of the gas escaping. Climeworks also hopes to eventually build even larger plants that will scale up its technology to remove 33 million tons of CO2 every year. Despite all of its benefits, direct air capture can't single-handedly compensate for our carbon emissions. In fact, it's just one of many carbon removal technologies. Oil companies such as Shell are capturing it at the source of emissions and recycling it or burying it underground. Shell has captured and stored more than 5.5 million tons of CO2. That's equivalent to the annual emissions of roughly 1.25 million cars. Another way to remove CO2 is to plant more trees. A study found that by planting more than 500 billion trees and increasing our forested area by roughly 25%, we could eventually reduce atmospheric carbon by about 25%. Any one of these carbon removal methods is not a solution by itself. Instead, each one makes up just one piece of the puzzle. Electric cars and alternative sources of energy are just some of the many other things that can be done to help alleviate the effects of carbon emissions on the atmosphere. 
At the rate we're going, we may just need to do it all at the same time.